So let's move into the next program. It's called SDSL, and that's NutriPlant SDSL, and it's a micronutrient root enhancer, and you can get it in powder and liquid form. Um, the SD is powder, the SL is liquid. It's a unique blend of micronutrients. It's complex with fermentation metabolites. It can be applied to anywhere your seed's moving, whether it's in the planter box or in your seed tenders or out of your bulk truck or in any number of ways. Uh, it can be applied. If the seed's moving, I want to get it on there. It's going to electrostatically attach itself to the seed. And, and as you can see, this is the powder form. Um, it's very much like talc. And the reason is because talc is the carrier for the micro. So if you're using talc in your planter systems, you can replace your talc. You don't have to buy talc. You can use this. And now you have a micronutrient, if you want to call it a fertilizer, biostimulant, whatever you want to call it, that goes right on the seed. Once it's on the seed, you're going to get better root development, faster emergence. It is exciting. Why is it so economical? Because if I look at these rates on alfalfa, I'm on 100 pounds of seed for four ounces, I'm probably talking in the dollar an acre range. You know, for corn, I may be talking in the dollar and a half to dollar 75 range at the most. You know, and so I'm looking at in the one to two dollar application rate for this product. It's absolutely phenomenal for the return on investment. Uh, so it doesn't take a lot of product to, to get done what you want to do because you're treating the seed. Micronutrients, we've all known as farmers that they're, you know, once they're mined out of the soil, you have to replace them. They're not naturally being replaced. So you have to do that. And you can broadcast micronutrients and it's not very expensive, but the process is that micronutrient is not where you need it when the plant needs it. Micronutrients are very time-oriented applications. In other words, you have to have it at the plant when it needs it. It doesn't do it much good if it gets there when it doesn't need it. Okay, because it will uptake and, and not uptake micronutrients based on what it needs. For instance, a corn plant will need 20 times the amount of calcium the first three days, two to three days of its life that it does as a full-grown plant. And if you have the calcium right there for it, you're going to do it some real good right there in that point. All right, so um, this is our data because we started marketing SD and SL and AG, the NutriPlant products, in 2001. So the, the data previous to that, 20 years of data, you can see the yield increases percentage-wise that we got across the board, you know, not just in North America, but across the world where the product was marketed. So there, that's significant. I mean, you can look at the dollar figures you want, but I, the red is what I like to show guys. And small grains, even is the, the, the best, where you get your wheats and, and uh, milos and that sort of thing. So um, what's it look like in the lab when you treat a corn plant? Uh, or with, with SD, uh, a corn plant without treated by SD, your micro hairs are what is your uptake of your moisture and your nutrients. So that's how you get water up and nutrients into the plant. When you treat that plant with, with the seed with SD, look what it does to the micro hairs. Phenomenal. A lot more root hairs, and, and you, you, once you germinate those seeds, this is, these seeds were the same, have the same bag of corn, um, uh, 10 seeds in each pod. And once they, you know, obviously germinate and you take them off so they have light and let them go, this is the 12th of December, this is the 13th, this is the 14th, significant, 15th, and the 16th. Which corn plant would you want, particularly for a dollar or a dollar and a half an acre? Okay, this solves a lot of that uniform emergence that we talked about, seed to soil contact, big deal because once it germinates, the SD gives it almost a 100% survivability rate once it germinates. That will help. Um, if you have a crusting, which plant do you think is going to push through that crust better? All right. So you're, it's, it's a great insurance policy for one, but the biggest thing is what's the return on investment? It is phenomenal. This is on the 24th, and you can see the difference. The root mass is definitely different. And uh, this is a good example. We caught this picture. Two, a farmer had two drills running, two different tractors and drills. One was treating with SD, one was not. And we found the line where they split the field. Interestingly enough, two days later, you couldn't see that line because the other side came up. And visually, to the naked eye, it was kind of the same. But when we went out, you could look right down the tubers and tillers in that wheat. There was a significant difference. And then if you dig the plant up, this is kind of what you see. A lot bigger root system, a lot bigger shoots and points. My the guys out in the western Oklahoma that pasture their the, the pasture their a lot of their cows out there, they love this on their wheat because their wheat's a food source more so than it is a crop for them, and uh, and they're still getting a good crop after that with SD. Um, a 45-day corn plant, that's kind of what you'd like to see uh, with the application. 
you know, if it's a low stress year, like last year we had lots of rain, <laughs> perfect, you know, some of the most perfect and scenarios, well, those were lower stress. I mean, not, a lot of things you didn't need to do last year. You were going to raise a crop, okay? But, you know, you're not looking for the years that are perfect because those are few and far between compared to the years that you've got variability issues, okay? Uh, when we first started at an eight-row planter, we put seven rows with SD and one row without. And we monitored those side by side in the same field. We thought that was a very pretty accurate test. 100% brace root development versus about 10%. The shoots and the, and, and the stocks were a little bit bigger. These plants were just a, just a little bit taller. And that's pretty much on the average what the ears look like. We did a manual calculation on row to row. About a 7% yield increase is what it came out to. Okay, that told me that this product was doing something that I needed to do, particularly for the input cost. Wow. So when you look at micro, uh, if you look at precision farming, what's it look like today? This picture absolutely encapsulates what precision farming is, okay, and what you're trying to accomplish. Let's put a micronutrient root enhancer on the seed. Let's put our starter fertilizer just a little bit away from the seed so that the micronutrient can establish that plant, give it a real good start so it's ready to uptake that nitrogen. You put your NPK at maybe uh, four to six inches down the first NPK, the second NPK, it's maybe eight to 10 inches deep. And now we've trained and we've put our inputs and trained our plant to move vertically in the profile. I mean, that's what everybody in, in the industry is really looking towards doing in one form or the other. That's with corn. Of course, it applies to other plants as well. But in many soils, 15% of your nutrient pool, pool is below 24 inches. We want our root systems at that level, okay? I want to throw this little test in here. It's not my test. It came from K-State. I don't know where that school is, but somebody told me it's out here ways, okay? And people wear purple. I know that. But, um, but also, uh, Oklahoma State and Purdue duplicated this study. It was a three-year test to say, is starter fertilizer in furrow? How, what, what's it doing to our plant populations and yields? And they did, ran different levels of nitrogen on their starter fertilizer and their in furrow plant populations I think there was a 30, uh, it's a 32,000 plant population. Uh, uh, the two by two, which means that they placed their starter fertilizer two inches down and two inches over, or two inches over, two inches down, 31,266 plants survived. But in the same, but they, when they applied the same rate in furrow, only 25,202 plants survived. At two by zero, 31,170, and if they sprayed it over the top of the row, 31,266, okay? So when you start looking at their survivability rates, there are significant differences there. And the yield, you're hoping you can overcome the yield ding. Um, here in furrow, they averaged out of all five tests, 171. At two by two, they averaged 207. Uh, two by zero, 205, and row band was 189. The reason I show that to you is if you go back to this, why it's so critical to get that micronutrient root enhancer, that SD on that seed so that it has a chance to help the retardation or the loss that you have from starter fertilizers. And, and even if it's, you don't have the loss because you're two by two, when that plant reaches, when those root systems reach that nitrogen, if it's a stronger, healthier, bigger plant, it's gonna uptake it better. And it, I mean, it's just off to a double bang, double, double bang, okay? So our test results from the Irrigation Research Foundation, uh, 5.3 bushel on corn for a dollar, basically a dollar and a half an acre, uh, that's $21 increase. Okay, that's not too bad for a buck increase. Uh, if you have 1,000 acres, it's $21,000 for, you know, basically $1,000 input. Pretty good odds. That'd be pretty good odds at the casino. I'll guarantee you we'd all be down there for that kind of odds. So soybeans, two years of testing, 5.5 bushel. It's pretty good. Dry land winter wheat, 6.8 bushel. Um, these are for alfalfa with SD and APS applied to it. Both of them, the SD on the first plant in alfalfa produced 7.8 tons quite an increase over control. The APSA treated APS, I'm going back to the APSA there, so don't confuse that, but was less, but because of the relative feed value, the value of the crop was more, $477 to the acre versus 385. So you have to look at both the relative feed value in that crop as well as your tonnage. So four year averages on the alfalfa with SD though, uh, about a half a ton to the acre more increase because you only did it one time when you first planted that alfalfa. Comes in a 25 pound pail and a 1.6 gallon because they both do about the same and they're the same cost, okay? The liquid or the, the powder. So um, any, any questions on the SD? I did say that you could replace your talc, right? With that product, you still have to use graphite. If you're, if you're required to use graphite in your planter, you still have to use graphite, but you can replace the talc. 
one of the interesting parts about this is that micronutrients, if you're reading your trade journals, are a big subject. And people that are pushing yields, or they're pushing them, one of the, one of the factors they're doing is micronutrient, micronutrient feeding. And they're doing, and micronutrients, in every case, is all about timing. You get the biggest bang for your buck for when, because of the timing you put them on. Here you're putting the micronutrient on when you know there's going to be a stressful situation. When that plant germinates, it's going to get stressed right there. You need to give it some of the things it's, it's needing to survive, push on through, push out of the soil, and get moving. That's a timing application, and it's very economical and easy to put on.